Of you who have had some formal exposure to the study of white car crime certainly know that uh, Edwin Sutherland is credited with the discovery of white car crimes, treated as the founder of white collar crime scholarship. Now, Sutherland, born in 1883, came from a rural, uh, small town environment in Nebraska, very much a world really wedded to a kind of traditional. Uh, way of life. As a graduate student going to the University of Chicago uh, in the early part of the 20th century, Sutherland becomes increasingly exposed to a modern, uh, a modern uh, world and uh, a capitalist uh, society, so to speak, in, in, this, in this context. When he started to write about white collar crime, particularly between 1939 and 1949, culminating in his famous book published shortly before his death in 19, 1950, uh, he really imposes in that book on the subject of white collar crime very much of a, of a modern national framework. By that I mean that he treated white collar crime in terms of the activities of modern industrial corporations and American, American uh, industrial corporations, there's virtually no reference to other countries, uh, for example. And my uh, uh, thesis here is that uh, as great as the contribution of Sutherland uh, is, that increasingly we need to understand white car crime in the context of a postmodern uh, globalized uh, framework. Now, uh, some criminologists uh, have, some who have attended to white collar crime, have uh, embraced uh, a, a, a postmodern or globalized elements. One of them, of course, sitting, sitting right here, Greg, Greg Bagg, uh, Passis, Mikulowski, who will be here supposedly uh, tomorrow. And my understanding actually spoke about some of these themes uh, last year. Uh, Ray Mikulowski, Ron Kramer, uh, Nancy Wonders, and Mona Dana. Uh, Russell and uh, Gilbert, um, Preston Toombs, John Braithwaite, uh, enormously prolific uh, scholar, uh, produced a book with Peter Drehos called Global Business Regulation. It hasn't got perhaps the attention it deserves that, that looks at the immense uh, challenges uh, in the modern globalized world of, of, of dealing, regulating and dealing with uh, big businesses. So. There have been some criminologists who have indeed uh, incorporated, I, th I think there's still very much of a minority, uh, but there are some. And some of the themes, some of the themes of their uh, literature are, uh, first, the role of transnational corporations and the difficulties of controlling them. Increasingly, we have transnational or multinational corporations, and the challenges of controlling them exceed those of traditional national uh, Corporations. Secondly, the, the sources of criminogenic tendencies within globalization. Globalization promotes uh, various forms of, of corporate and transnational uh, crime. Uh, a third theme has been the impact of globalization on other forms of, of crime, not just corporate crime and, and, and white collar crime. And some of this literature has focused particularly on especially vulnerable classes of uh, victims, for example, how women disproportionately are victims of crime in an increasingly globalized uh, world. So those have been some of the themes of this, this uh, literature. Now, I said earlier that I've been concerned with typologies, and uh, the upshot of this is that to understand and deal with white collar crime in the world today, I think you have to extend the, the traditional uh, typologies of, of white collar crime. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, traditional confusion about uh, what white collar crime means and how it should be defined. I'm not going to go into the details of that. In Europe, they tend to use the term economic crime, but I think that that muddies the conceptual waters. It's not very helpful. Uh, some several decades ago, uh, Clenard and Quinney made a distinction that's been widely accepted between corporate crime, crime carried out on behalf of corporations and occupational crime, uh, crimes carried out in the context of legitimate occupations. In my book, and again, I won't here take the time to attempt to uh, define uh, these particular types, can refer you to the, uh, my, my trusted criminals, but I, I talk about, I think you have to extend the typology beyond these 
fundamental types. The cognate forms of uh, white collar crime include governmental crime, which can be broken down into crimes committed on behalf of the state on the one hand, and political white collar crime, really the equivalent, the public sector equivalent of uh, occupational crime, taking bribes uh, committed in a political context. And beyond that, there are what I call hybrid forms of white collar crime, including what I call avocational crime, tax evasion would fit under that heading, enterprise crime, which really is uh, the, the mixed activity of organized crime and uh, businesses, entrepreneurial crime, or really scams that have the, uh, have the um, semblance of legitimate businesses. State corporate crime, again, Ray Michalowski, who will be here tomorrow with uh, Ron Kramer, pioneered that important term more than 10 years ago, where you have a uh, combination of cooperative activity between states and corporations, what I call finance crime that occurs in the worlds of uh, high finance. We've seen a lot of that uh, recently, a techno crime that is carried out uh, on, with the use of modern technology. So without going into those different types in any detail here, I'm just trying to give you an impression that uh, white collar crime today uh, in various ways manifests itself in many different forms and, and has uh, many different uh, types. Now, uh, one type that uh, I think is, is particularly uh, uh, significant, and I've introduced in the second edition of, of Trusted Criminals, are crimes of globalization. What I mean by crimes of globalization are really uh, those forms of harm that occur as a consequence of the policies and activities of the international financial institutions. The international financial institutions were essentially established after World War II uh, at the Bretton Woods uh, Conference and include the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and the World uh, Trade Organization. And they have uh, put forth uh, enormously influential but very controversial uh, policies. And I will speak a little more specifically about the consequences of those policies in a moment. But uh, the upshot here is that many of these policies have had profoundly uh, harmful consequences in uh, developing uh, countries. So turning to uh, what a white collar crime means in a globalized world, as I said, globalization is one of the buzzwords of our era. It's all over the place, huge literature and so forth and so on. It's defined in many different ways, and we could be here for the rest of the afternoon if I tried to sort through all those uh, definitions. So for our purposes, I'm just going to uh, invoke a few salient dimensions of globalization. Uh, and this is really just a very superficial outline under these circumstances. It has both new and enduring elements. Some aspects of globalization are very old, some are quite new. It has not just economic dimensions, but political and cultural dimensions. Uh, the role of transnationals uh, and uh, international financial institutions is very central in this new globalized world. And these transnational corporations and international financial institutions operate in profoundly non-democratic uh, manners. Uh, and that a central project of uh, globalization is the expansion of uh, global markets. Now, some further dimensions of globalization that I think are significant relative to white collar crime is to recognize first that it has complex and contradictory tendencies. So, and, and what that really means is that I think a fair assessment says there are winners and there are losers. Um, the problem is that there are disproportionately um, more losers, I think, today, and inequalities are expanding. Uh, again, uh, some poor people in developing countries, and I think there's no question about it, have benefited from policies of globalization, but too many have come out on the uh, short end. Certainly a central attribute of globalization is intensified global interconnections and communications. I think that's really, that is something that is basically new. If I said earlier that not all aspects of globalization are new, that is indeed new. Uh, some have characterized globalization as we all know in the 19th century you had colonialism into the early part of the 20th century, much of which was swept away throughout the 20th century, globalization as the new form of colonialism. 